What's going on guys, Andrew Pillock Hockey here back with another video and as you guys see from the title and as you probably know if you follow hockey and are on the hockey Twitter machine because everybody's on the hockey Twitter machine, everybody's looking at Twitter lately, Peter Shirelli is out of Edmonton as the president and GM of the Oilers. Now we've seen this coming a mile away, the move is coming at a weird time. Now the reason I say that and we'll get to all this stuff, I believe Shirelli was with the team for three years. Clearly, uh, what they wanted to do was build a winning culture around Connor McDavid. They, you know, they had Todd McClellan come in. He got fired. They had Shirelli obviously come in. Now he's gone. But they didn't build what they were supposed to around McDavid. He had the injury in the first season. Of course, they they had a nice little playoff run for one year. But the Oilers are basically missing the playoffs every single year. They haven't been able to develop their stars of course, McDavid didn't really need development. He was already an instant star when he came into the league. But th the Oilers had tons of talent. They had tons of draft picks. There's memes for days about the Oilers having first overall draft selections or at least top three picks, top four, top five picks for days. And not even just for days, but for years, literally. And they did nothing with it. The one year they had success... And Shirelli made a lot of bad moves. He's obviously made a lot of really or done a lot of really bad contracts. He's made bad trades, and of course those are the Larson for Hall deals, the Eberle trades, Spooner and Ratty are on waivers. So that basically means the Eberle trades out the window. They could have had Barzal uh, if they wouldn't have traded away a, a pick. You know the Griffin Reinhardt trade. Basically everything is coming to right now, and people are starting to realize in you know Edmonton's head office, and of course the hockey world knows that Shirelli has made a lot of mistakes. Now, I want to sit here and act like I can, you know, put all the blame on Shirelli, but I can't. Shirelli literally was the guy that was told what to do. He, of course, he made a lot of his own moves, but that Oilers brass, their management is awful. And I'll, don't worry, I'll get back to my point on why it, it's a weird situation for them to, to fire him now. But to finish my point on their management, their team, whatever, this has been the Edmonton Oilers, what do they call it, the old boys, the old man's club or whatever. They, they basically have the same management. You know, Daryl Cates is in on meetings that he shouldn't be in on. He's the owner. Uh, there's just way too many people trying to put their hands in every trade and, and, and signing, and it doesn't work. The Oilers have a lot of former general managers, people who have been fired in other jobs for poor work. It, it doesn't work. The Oilers head office is terrible. It's awful. Something needs to change. Everybody needs to go. There needs to be a lot of firings because this team is not going in the right direction. Uh, I do still have a video planned. It's, it's going to take different shape now, rebuilding the Oilers. One of my friends is going to be involved in it. And we're both going to take cap friendly and build a team for the Oilers next season and see how far um, people will take those and, and see if it makes sense. But obviously we're not GMs. To finish my point, the Oilers fired Shirelli. Yes, he made a lot of bad moves, but he's not the only one that people should be pointing the finger at. Daryl Cates has is, is basically been a terrible um, owner when it comes to uh, basically sticking his nose into places that he shouldn't be. Uh, like None of these owners or upper management that aren't knowledgeable enough to, to talk about you know a, a trade or a signing probably shouldn't have input on who you draft. Uh, um, like the Yakupov draft, apparently like he had a say in that, or at least a, a bunch of people who don't know the game that well had a say in who was being drafted. It doesn't make sense. If you want to learn more about that, listen to uh, the Steve Dangle podcast, or I'm, I'm sure you could search it up. They recently talked about it, but other people have talked about it before. Uh, getting back to my point about how this is a very we uh, weird uh, time. So basically, the press release that I have here is that he was fired late Tuesday evening. Of course, I woke up to the news. And uh, the Oilers lost last night to the Detroit Red Wings. And I watched most of that game. Koskinen let in some soft goals. And I'll get to that in a second. But they're, they're going into the All-Star break with nine losses in their last 11 home games. And basically, there was a meeting between um, Oilers CEO Bob Nicholson and, um, well, led by Bob Nicholson, and there was a bunch of people in there. They basically decided that Shirelli needed to go, and they're probably looking at who's going to take over. 
And there's going to be a press conference. I'm not sure if that's happening while you're watching this or if something's happened. Uh, again, I can't predict the future, but for now, we know he's fired. Keith Gretzky is apparently taking over some of his duties, along with Vice Chairman Bob Nicholson, to uh, basically handle stuff until they find a new GM, which could be any minute. We have no idea how far they've been looking into this. But basically, re it says in the Sports article, Rebuild 4.0 is scheduled for the summer of 2019, which is something that Oilers fans don't want to hear. You have the best player in the world. You have a good secondary scorer in Leon Dreisaitl. You have some decent pieces when it comes to prospects and defensemen. You know, they have Nurse and uh, they have Bouchard coming up. They have a couple other prospects that should be okay for next season as well, or at least in the next couple of years. But the Oilers really need to, you know, settle down with what they're doing. Now, as a fan of trade rumors, trades, and all this stuff like that, when I heard the Oilers were going to be giving up possibly their first over, well, first overall, first round selection, and uh, possibly Pulley Arvey, I was thinking, this is a bad move, but I'm here to watch. Like, I, I was getting my popcorn ready to see what Shirelli was going to do. And then I, when this, si this firing happened, I'm thinking, okay, I don't know if the Oilers are going to still go in that direction. I hope they don't at this point. Would be good for entertainment, but... Again, I have to keep getting back to my point before I forget. The Shirelli firing is happening at the worst possible time. This is a nightmare for Oilers fans. Shirelli, well, it's it's not a nightmare in the sense that Shirelli's gone, but it's a nightmare that you need to find another GM and replace uh, a very important spot going into the trade deadline. You have no GM technically. You have no vision because Shirelli has screwed up this team. Like, how did they allow him to make that Koskinen signing before he left is beyond me. I'm, I posted the video last night saying, what's next? Apparently, it was Shirelli. And the, the move, and literally, I posted that video, and two hours later, he got fired, which is crazy. But obviously, I'm not saying uh, my video did it. I'm saying it's just weird that I said, what's next? And, of course, he got fired, like, two hours later. So the video kind of was messed up. But... The, the Koskinen signing, he got overpaid. You should have been able to pay about $2 million or $2.5 million, uh, maybe even less for a goaltender like that. They would have been able to find uh, a decent comparable in free agency for way less money as well. Possibly Elliot. I was discussing with my friend that it, it might make sense, my friend Tyler. Um, but Shirelli being gone now, you have no GM. You're going into the trade deadline, the all-star break right now. So they're going to be looking for a GM probably and looking at options going forward. They have to make a decision here. Uh, you know, you're you're out. You're not that far out of a playoff position. Are you good enough to win playoff rounds? Probably not. But do you have to sell it to your fans that we need to win? This press conference that's happening could be happening right now. I'm not even sure. I've got to record some videos today. I've got a lot to do. I've rec I'm recording for three channels, for my hockey, wrestling, and music channel. So I'm not sure what they're exactly doing, but this is crazy. Um, I was going to talk more in depth, but I think that, that I'm going to save that for another video. But for now, Oilers fans, listen, I feel you. It sucks. Th there might be another rebuild coming. There should be. You're going to have to shed a lot of salary. I know people were mad at me when I said that a guy like Russell might have to be a guy to go. But listen, you guys literally don't have cap space. Like, people always are talking about the Leafs and whatever. Like, you're in a way worse position. Like, th the cap space is not good. And you have to shed salary. That Lucic contract somehow has to go. Now you've got an overpaid goaltender who's 30 years old, who'll be 31 next season. And you're giving him a deal until he's like pretty much 34 years old, 33, 34 years old. Unproven. Hopefully it works out. Um, you've basically got a decent prospect pool and no supporting cast. So I'm not sure what they're going to do, but it's going to take a long time. So... Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. This is crazy. I can't believe what's going on with the Oilers right now. I'm hoping I can finish recording before uh, that press conference. So if you're new, make sure you subscribe. Love to have more hockey conversations with you. Join the squad. Let's get to 5,000 subscribers. Thank you guys so much for all the support. I'll see you guys in the next video or stream. Peace.